Hello. We'll look at cash management today. That was a quick reminder, remember? We're still looking at working capital management. So we've looked at AR management. We've looked at inventory management. Today we'll look at cash. And um, remember I always tell you, you must know why. Why do we need to do cash management? So what are the objectives? What are we trying to achieve? Two things we're trying to achieve. When we looked at why we do working capital management, I told you the major reason why we do working capital management is because there is always a conflict between liquidity and profitability. And cash plays a huge role in these two objectives. So this is the same reason why we manage cash because number one, we want to make sure that we have just enough cash, yeah? to set to our obligations. Yeah. When they fall due. And secondly, we don't want to have too much. So not too much cash as well. Because remember, if you have too much, it means you are not investing. And if you are not investing, you are not going to be profitable. So we want to make sure we don't have too much so that we can be profitable. So the first one, this the first objective is about liquidity. And this one is about profitability. So those are the two major reasons why we have to deliberately manage our cash. We don't want to be short of cash and at the same time we don't want to have excessive cash. But how do we manage this? How do we do it? There are three ways that we'll look into today. The first one is Miller Hall. Yeah, we we'll look at Miller Hall model of managing cash. We'll look at BAMO and we'll look at cash budgeting. Those are the three ways you we use to manage your cash. The first one, Miller Hall, I'm going to simplify it. And in the next video, I will solve question on it. But let me make you understand what Miller Hall is talking about. So Miller Hall is saying that this gentleman believes that you can never have the same amount of cash every day, every week, every month, every year. But your cash balance it's going to fluctuate. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So it's going to fluctuate like that over the years. But you want to be in charge. So which means you need to know how much cash you need to satisfy your liquidity goal and how much cash you need to also be able to achieve your profitability goal. So you don't want to keep too much and you don't want to keep too little. So because you don't want to keep too little, Milaos says you must identify your minimum level of cash. So let's say this is five. So you can say this is my minimum level. And I will show you in calculation how you calculate the minimum level, the maximum level, and all the levels you need to know. So you need to identify what should be your minimum level based on your obligations that you have. Yeah? And so you identify the minimum level which means you don't expect yourself to have anything less than this level. Because anything less than this level will be very dangerous for your business. Likewise, you also need to identify the maximum level of cash you want to keep. Maximum level. Because you're saying that anything above this maximum level is waste of money because you're wasting resources. You're not able to invest and make money. So when you have anything out of this zone, it's not good. It's a waste of resources. And anything lower than this is very dangerous. Very dangerous. Because this can actually take you out of business. This area. So... What you're saying is anytime you have cash 
that is lower than 5 million here, this minimum level that you have decided, you need to divest, which means you need to sell some of your investment. Yeah, divest means convert investment to cash so that you can increase your cash balance. So you, you need to increase your cash balance. Yeah, but the question is, do you increase that cash balance back to minimum level, 5 million? No, you don't. And that is why you need to know the third level, which is called the return level. So what Milao says is that when you go below your minimum level, you don't go back to your minimum level. Rather, you go back to a return level. So you need to know what your return level is. There is also a formula for that, which I will give you. So this is your return level. So every time you go lower than your minimum level, you raise the cash back to return level. And every time you go above your maximum level, what do you do? You also return cash back to your return level. So, which means if you say your maximum level is 7 million here, and you have cash balance of 9 million, it means you need to invest all the money here so you invest how much do you invest if your cash balance is nine million and your maximum is seven million you must have calculated your return level which stays say let's say six million then it means that if you have nine million you need to invest three million please take note you are not going to invest two million because you are not trying to bring it back to seven million. You bring it back to return level always. Whether you go above your maximum level or below your minimum level, you are always returning back to the return level. Please take note because that's a common mistake. You must return back to you, your return level. That is called that is why it is called return level. So you're gonna invest three million, then you go back to six million. And if you go so low to say 2 million it means that you need to divest how much you need to divest 4 million so that your 2 million balance can go back to return level of 6 million so please this is very examinable yeah you need to be able to explain melaho and the simple calculation that comes with it you need to be able to do it i'm going to solve questions on it in my next video on how to calculate all these levels but i'll just give you a bit of formula we're going to be using so generally your maximum level is equal to your minimum level plus spread. Right? Then you need to know how to calculate your spread as well. And your spread is calculated as 3 times this. 3 over 4 multiply by your transaction cost multiply by variance as well okay this is small let me try and create a space for it so everything can go in one space so spread equals to 3 times 3 over 4 multiplied by transaction cost multiplied by variance yes very important then all of that divided by interest per day please take note is interest per day then all of this raised to power 1 over 3 yeah, we'll, we're going to use this formula for sure. By the time I do a full question, I'm going to do a full question where you're going to see how you apply this uh, Miller Hall. But if you just look at it like that, looks like a difficult formula, but it's actually a very popular formula, which, uh, uh, trust me, you find it so easy. By the time we look at uh, one or two calculations, yeah. But like I said, you need to understand that 
this is focusing on what the cash balance should be you should never have more than your maximum and should never have lower than your minimum right so that is very important and your maximum level is your minimum level plus spread and i've given you how to calculate your spread yeah but also you need to know your return level so return level is really calculated as your lower limit which is your minimum level let me stay consistent so that you don't yeah so is your minimum level is minimum level of cash you want to keep plus one over three of spread so that's one over three times spread and you would have gotten your spread from here so there are three levels maximum minimum and return level so you know how to calculate all of them now yeah from these three formulas and that is a summary of miller hall because usually that is what you will face in exam and you'll be asked to also explain or interpret what it means for the company so remember when you go beyond your maximum level you invest when you go below your minimum level you divest to increase your cash the second approach which we'll look at is bamo bamo model yeah bamo model yeah very important model yeah and i'm happy we've looked at eoq when we're looking at uh, inventory management because bamo model is just another eoq model but eoq for cash so everything we spoke about under inventory is also relevant for cash here yeah. and how do you interpret it remember this is also similar to inventory because you don't want to keep too much cash the same way you don't want to keep too much inventory because of holding cost and opportunity cost and all of that yeah the same way you don't want to also buy inventory too many times so that your ordering cost will not be super high and at the same time you are willing to get so much discounts on your inventory if you are able to get bulk discounts and all of that yeah and you know in eoq model for inventory you are trying to minimize holding cost and ordering cost this is the same focus of bomo bomo wants to minimize the holding and ordering cost but this time around for cash that is the focus yeah but the difference is that in cash we will not call it these names yeah what you used to call ordering cost for inventory is what we'll call transaction cost for cash transaction cost yeah and what we used to call holding cost for inventory we'll now call it opportunity cost and i believe you understand what opportunity cost will mean for cash opportunity cost is just saying if you owed 10 million cash yeah what are you losing what you are losing is your return on investment that is your opportunity cost because because you have not invested this 10 million yeah, you didn't invest it, then you will not make the return on 10 million. So you are keeping that 10 million in your bank account. You are not investing it. And by not investing it, you are losing the return, potential return you could have made by investing. So that's your opportunity cost. So that is the holding cost for cash. And the ordering cost for cash is the transaction cost you have to incur every time you want to make investment. Yeah. And the D, yeah, is always your annual cash available which is like excess cash yeah excess cash available yeah in that year yeah which you're always going to be given right excess cash um, but remember work with annual data yeah Ex annual excess cash so the same formula will be used which is q yeah, which is the amount you should invest 
every time you want to invest cash yeah this amount invested per transaction just like in inventory we call it quantity you need to order if you're using eoq so same thing as amount invested per transaction which is your the cash you want to invest so how do you get that eoq that eoq for cash is the same formula for inventory which is now going to be two multiplied by the transaction cost multiplied by the excess annual cash available then divided by the opportunity cost yeah opportunity cost yeah for holding that cash square root so that is bummer and most times the calculation is not always tested it's very rare but you need to also understand the interpretations just like um i've explained it's an eoq model and it's just a replica of of that the third one which is the last approach for margin cash is the use of cash budgeting very popular there is no company that doesn't do cash budgeting it's almost impossible to survive and what's the focus of cash budgeting it's just answering this question it's saying how much so you want to know how much how much cash do we need in future that is the question we are trying to ask yeah when we know how much cash we need in future then we're able to invest excess so that we don't keep excess yeah for nothing you can't keep excess cash because when you keep excess cash your, your profitability will be horrible yeah so we don't lose profit at the same time when we know how much we need we can make necessary effort yeah to do what to source for additional cash because if we wait until we need it before we start sourcing it might be too late so that is what cash budgeting will help you do and how do you do it it's just about projections so you need to make projections of revenue and expenses yeah when you make revenue projection expenses project projections then you're gonna have what you call your excess cash available or you have deficits so if you have excess cash you in, you plan to invest if you have deficit then you plan to either borrow yeah or divest investment very important so that's what cash parity helps you to achieve yeah so once you do all of this you're able to predict how much cash you will need in the future and how much cash you really have to keep excess cash you invest if you have deficit you source for cash that's how you manage your cash and remember the objective the objective is such that i don't want to keep too much i don't want to keep too little and in my subsequent video at least about maybe the next two videos i will just be solving questions on inventory management and cash management so please stay tuned and um if you like this video please remember like it share it comment if something you want me to touch on that probably i've not touched on you think you feel confused about anything but please feel free to mention it in the comment reach out to me and i'll be here to support you in your journey